we developed a new DICOM viewer applet for the Merck teaching file system. It has image editing capabilities and can save modified images to the server. Our main goals were to improve on the current DICOM viewing capabilities found in Merck. We wanted to allow users to view a wide range of images, including multi-frame images and compressed images. We also wanted to allow them to transform images so that they could view them in different ways and to allow them to draw on and add text to images. We didn't want to start from scratch with the implementation, so we spent a significant amount of time surveying current open source DICOM editors. We wanted something with a reasonable feature set and with an active development community. We decided to use an image editor called ImageJ. It was originally developed by the National Institutes of Health in the US, and it's used in the life sciences, pathology, and in medical imaging. It has a plugin architecture, and there are quite a few plugins available online, so it's easy to extend the functionality of the editor. One problem with ImageJ, and you can see this in the last video clip, is that the look and feel of the editor makes it inappropriate for deployment as an embedded applet. Recently, an open source project called ImageJA was created to improve applet deployments in ImageJ. ImageJA is a fork of ImageJ, but with some minor modifications. You can see that the look and feel uh, make it more appropriate with images shown in a single embedded scroll panel instead of in multiple floating windows. The main challenge involved in trying to adapt ImageJ and ImageJA for deployment in Merck is that they're designed to be generic image editors, not DICOM editors. They can open and display uncompressed to DICOM, but not compressed and they can't save DICOM files. Both applications try to provide a wide range of features, making them bloated and difficult to navigate. Our approach was to significantly modify the ImageJA source so that it could be deployed as a DICOM viewer and editor. We customized the user interface and expanded its functionality. We also modified Merck where needed so that the applet would be smoothly integrated into the teaching file. We wanted to leverage existing code as much as possible, so we used several open source DICOM libraries and an HTTP library. The first modification we made was to expand the range of images that can be displayed by the viewer. This was accomplished using the University of Wisconsin's Bioformats plugin and with several modifications to the editor source code. It now displays compressed DICOM images and SVS virtual microscopy slides. Major changes were made to the ImageJ user interface. These focused on simplifying the design by removing features that are inappropriate for applet deployments and by emphasizing those that are important in radiology. The applet shown here running in a Merck teaching file case. Tooltips were added to the buttons in the toolbar. The toolbar also contains three buttons for viewing multi-frame images. The image is animated and plays in a loop by default. Users can also step forward or backward a frame at a time. A lookup table menu was added. Users can apply color filters to monochrome images. A stacks menu is also added and it contains operations that can be applied to multi-frame images. We wanted to allow users to expand the size of the applet in Merck so that they'd have more space to view images. We modified the Merck document JavaScript and XSL files to add, maximize, and minimize features. Here the user triggers the viewing applet for the current image and it runs with the default dimensions. When the maximize button is pressed, the, the viewer width increases and the image zooms in. The thumbnail images are preserved and the other Merck controls are still visible. 
When the editors in maximize mode, all selected images are automatically opened using the applet. When the user presses the minimize button, the editors resize to its default dimensions and the layout for the case is restored. ImageJ has quite a few built-in operations. It has support for drawing on images, transforming the appearance of images, and it has several features that allow the user to manipulate multi-frame images. The user selects the arrow tool and draws on the image. Since this is a monochrome image, all of the additions made to it will be in grayscale as well. The user clicks on the color palette button converting the image to RGB and now they can draw on the image using color. Text can also be added to the image using the text tool. A range of transformations are possible including flipping the image window and level, and zooming. We developed a plugin that allows ImageJ to save DICOM images. The plugin can save multi-frame and single-frame DICOM. It also can save images that were originally compressed, but it doesn't recompress them when it's saving. It handles monochrome, RGB, and palette color images. The plugin is triggered by pressing a toolbar button. The button is disabled when the user does not have the privileges to edit the image in Merck. If the user can edit the image, the button is enabled and a different icon is shown. When the button's pressed, the image is first saved on the user's local machine. The file is then sent to the Merck server. The saved file is automatically routed to the case where the original image is stored. In the future, we plan to make the source code and jar file available as part of an open source project. The editor's stable and has been tested in Firefox and Internet Explorer 7 and 8. We plan to refine the editor and to extend it based on feedback from users.